This woman had something very strange in her attic. Videos like this make me very, very uncomfortable living in my own house, okay? Because my bedroom in my house just so happens to be the one with the attic right over there. I've lived in this house for well over three years and not one singular time have I ever had even an itch to open that damn attic door and see what lurks beyond the darkness, dude. That's either infested with bugs and spiders, there is a crackhead up there, or there's a demon up there, dude. And none of those three options I'm willing to open my soul up to, bro. So that attic, as far as I'm concerned, is never coming open, dude. So I'm kind of concerned to find out what this woman had in hers. Makes me uncomfortable about what's lurking in mine. Bonjour, today's video is kindly sponsored by Babbel, the world's oui, number oui. one language learning gap. Baguette. 42 here. On the 22nd of August, 1922, police were called to a disturbance at a house in Los Angeles after neighbors reported hearing gunshots. The lady of the house, the wonderfully named Volberger Oosterreich, Dolly to her Volg friends, screaming his- Volberger Oosterreich. Dude, that's a fucking name, dude. Hysterically. Officers arrived to a grisly scene. Lying in a slowly spreading pool of blood on the living room floor was Dolly's husband, Fred Oosterreich. Not Fred! A persistent banging coming from the master bedroom upstairs led the police to Dolly herself, who'd been locked inside a large wardrobe. Once free of this unusual prison, a sobbing Dolly explained what had happened. An armed stranger had broken into the house, demanding that she and her husband hand over their valuables. Fred had refused to comply, and the intruder had eloquently articulated his unwillingness to discuss the matter further by shooting Fred three times at point blank range before bundling Dolly into the wardrobe. A quick search of the house revealed that Fred's prize mm, something's fishy. A diamond encrusted watch Why would he kill one stopped. person, but not the other one? You know what I mean? Like, why is he killing the husband, but he's not killing the wife? You know what I'm saying? If you don't kill somebody, you might as well just go all the way kill everybody. You know what I'm saying? Unless he's just uh, not a very good criminal like me. From what I've told you so far, this probably sounds like a million other robberies gone wrong that appear on the news on a weekly basis. But there's more to this case than meets the eye. Okay. Like, a lot more. And believe me, you're really going to struggle to guess who done it in this one. Despite her story, Dolly soon found herself at the heart of a fledgling murder investigation. I told After you. After all, there were no other suspects on hand, and it was well known that she and Fred had a volatile relationship. See, I told you something was fishy. Something's fishy, bro. Usually when burglars kill people in their house, they're making sure they take everybody, bro. Like, they're not just gonna shoot one person, leave you there while they lurk around your house looking for some jewels, bro. They're not doing that. You know what I'm saying? They shoot one person, usually it's because they're trying to get away, shoot them, and then they just immediately turn around and run away. You know what I mean? They don't stay there. So I knew her story was a little... Knew her story was a little fishy. Several neighbors claimed to have heard the couple arguing on that night in question. It also appeared that Fred had been killed with a .25 caliber pistol, okay. which was considered a lady's firearm, and not the kind of weapon you'd expect an armed robber to favor. But whilst the police suspected Dolly may have been behind her husband's murder, there was one major problem with their case. If Dolly had shot and killed Fred, how had she ended up locked inside the wardrobe? As it happens, the police were right to suspect Dolly was hiding something. Though it saved- I think, I think she had her, she hired somebody to stage the robbery to kill her husband and lock her in the thing, bro. She has somebody, she is somebody in cahoots. She's got a, she's got a, a wingman. To say that That's what I think. Never in a million years could they have guessed what that something was. What was it? With over 10 million subscribers worldwide and content updated She daily, had 10 million Babel subscribers in 1922? Oh life. my fucking god! Easy to see why. She's, the, she's the pioneer, bro! Ain't no PewDiePie! My for my grandmere, and my soleil for my soiree. 
I want to be able to travel in France and have it full of great Okay, you call this guy. Babel is great. With the accent. Professional for you. Then I, you and the suspenders. So don't miss out and click the link click in the his description link. below. Au revoir et bon chance. Au revoir. To understand how this bon murder jour. came about, we need to take a look at the events leading up to it. Because the seeds of this crime were planted a good nine years before it actually took place. Nine years. Back then, Fred and Dolly had been living in Milwaukee, where Fred owned a successful textiles factory. On the outside, they had the perfect life. There was plenty of money, they lived in a nice house, and with business at the factory booming, their future together seemed bright. There was only one problem. Okay. Fred Oosterreich was beginning to suspect he was losing his mind. He'd started to become forgetful, hmm. regularly misplacing things like clothes and his favorite cigars. Oh. He was hearing things too, scratching, scuffling sounds that seemed to come from the roof. He'd have put the noises down to mice, only Dolly never seemed to hear them. Fred went to see Bro, that's nothing out of the ordinary, bro. I'm, I, I'm exactly like this after I smoke a blicky, you know what I'm saying? Dude is just big token, big doinks. That's all it is, bro. And his wife don't know. ...and was given the you know all too predictable diagnosis that the stress of his high-profile job was beginning to get to him. The doctor prescribed him some good old-fashioned R&R, &R, but Fred had already discovered a far better medicine. Alcohol. Not that it helped. Oh, yes. In fact, it only seems... Oh, yes. Better. Nature's best medicine, bro. The, the nectar of the gods, bro. Alcohol cures all problems. Any and all problem you have, if physical, emotional, mental, just drink all of your sorrows away and you'll feel better in no time. Worse, Fred began to sense a sort of presence in his house. He'd catch glimpses of movement at the corners of his eyes. And once or twice, he awoke in the night, swearing a ghostly figure had been standing over him just moments before. Fred lived with this growing paranoia for five years before deciding enough was enough. It was time to move, preferably as far away from Milwaukee as possible. In 1918, Fred and Dolly relocated to LA. Fred probably hoped the sunshine would chase away his demons, but sadly, it wasn't to be. Every single one of his symptoms continued in their new home, something that seemed to confirm Fred's worst fears. Okay. It hadn't been the house. It was him. He was losing his grip on reality. Fred descended further into drink, and his relationship with Dolly deteriorated rapidly. It wasn't helped by the fact he strongly suspected his wife was being unfaithful. But in truth, the tension between them... Oh, that's a doozy. He's slowly losing his mind. He's become an alcoholic and he suspects his wife of cheating, bro. Yeah, that does that usually that usually doesn't have a happy ending. And one night, the powder... Usually that ends up with some type of domestic Fred and Dolly had dispute. a blazing row. Both were screaming and threats were made. The kind of threats that aren't easy to take back the next day. But as it happened, Fred would never get the chance, because just when it seemed a very dangerous line was about to be crossed, a man pa, burst pa. into the room, brandishing two small pistols. There was a brief scuffle, and in the confusion, the intruder shot Fred at point-blank range three times, before collecting whatever valuables he could find, locking Dolly in a wardrobe upstairs and making his escape. If you've been paying wow, attention, that was a lot. you'll know that matches the story Dolly that was a told lot. the police pretty much exactly. But there were two small differences. What's up? And they changed everything. What happened? First of all, Fred had distinctly heard the intruder running downstairs before entering the living room where he and Dolly were arguing. Oh my if this god! Was a in search of an easy score, why did he run towards the homeowners? When I just came up with the craziest fucking theory. Oh my god, bro. What if his wife was cheating? What if his what if his wife was cheating and the dude she was cheating with 
she had him shacked up in the fucking attic, dude. So that way when hubby goes to work, he could just like, could shimmy down the ladder and hop right into fucking bed, dude. She hops right on his dick. What if she had her, 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 her lover that she's cheating with living in the attic, right? And then when they moved to Milwaukee, she fucking smuggled him in a moving box in the back of the U-Haul, bro. And they pulled up to fucking L.A. He got out. He's living in the attic of that fucking house, too. And so he heard them arguing. He thought his girl was in danger. So he goes there. He pulls up on boy and pops him, dude. Dude, if this if Dude, that's the craziest. Bro, don't, if that's what happens... I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. Collected the many valuables upstairs and left at his leisure. Even more interesting was the fact that Fred recognized a man who shot him. His name was Otto Sanhuber. Sanhuber. He worked in Fred's factory in Milwaukee as a sewing machine repairman almost a decade earlier before quitting his job suddenly in 1913. I Fred. told you! It's this fucking guy. It's this, it's this fucking. He's fucking the wife. He's living in the attic, dude. Hadn't seen the man since. So, any oh ideas what the God. hell is going on here? Yeah. Did Dolly hire an old acquaintance to bump off her husband? Might she have been microdosing Fred with poison to induce his fears of going insane? Or. Had she been telling the truth what if it's both the whole thing was just wouldn't be surprised really if it's both coincidence actually none of those things the truth was far more bizarre what Fred is it had been right to think dolly was having an affair she Her was lover, otto sanhuber had been hiding upstairs at the time of the argument and fearing for dolly's life He'd taken her pistols from a drawer in the nightstand and rushed downstairs to her. I fucking told you! Y'all gotta listen to me more, bro. Y'all think I just sit in this chair and I just babble on like an idiot and I just say some dumb thing and I'm trolling and I'm joking, bro. I fucking called it, bro! There had been a scuffle and after Fred was dead, Otto and Dolly quickly cooked up the intruder story. Otto then took Fred's diamond watch to make a robbery look more believable. I told you, I said she had to be good. Oh, I called exactly what the fuck happened. Oh, stop playing with me. Dolly in the wardrobe to give her a cast iron alibi. But here's the thing. When I said Otto Sanhuber was hiding upstairs. He's living. I didn't mean he just happened to be there at the time of the argument. Nah. Otto Sanhuber was always hiding upstairs. I fucking knew it, Fred bro. had been living with the man who would one day murder him for nine whole years. That's fucking Nothing crazy. Dolly had first taken a liking to Otto after seeing him working in Fred's factory in 1913. Bro, I say this again. I can't stress this enough. Dicks before chicks. And keen to, find what happens. to spend some time alone with him, she told Fred that their sewing machine was broken. As expected, Fred sent Otto round to fix it the very next day. In what might have been one of the earliest recorded examples of a now rather famous adult film trope, 17 year old Otto turned up at the Oyster Reich residence oh. to find Dolly dressed in stockings, a silk gown, and not a lot else. At first, the affair carried on much like any other. Whenever Otto could get time off work, he'd turn up at Dolly's place to give her sewing machine an extremely thorough fixing. But the neighbors were beginning to put two and two together. Dolly knew Otto couldn't keep coming to the house without Fred finding out about the affair. And so, she came up with a plan. We'll she make was going him to live. ask Otto to move in with her. That might seem like a logical step for a woman. Exactly. About He's always fucking there, side. ready to go. Did I not, not did I not just perfectly describe exactly dude? Dolly had absolutely I'm literally no a genius, bro. Where's my Nobel Peace Instead, Prize? She planned to have Otto move into her attic 
in secret so that he would always be on hand whenever her sewing machine needed fixing. Mm -mm -mm. This unusual little scheme did come with a few minor downsides from Otto's perspective, of course, namely that he would have to give up his job, his home, and all contact with the outside world. Imagine, I bro, imagine assume... you, you quit your job, sever all ties with family and friends, have no contact with the outside world, and you live in a fucking attic for nine years just to occasionally get some pussy. Bro, I, dude, I hope I never see any of y'all ever down this fucking bad, bro. This man is down catastrophically, dude. And Dolly had one hell of a nice sewing machine. Because believe it or not, Otto agreed. From that moment on, he lived on his bro, own. Bro, she, uh, she apparently she's got that fucking gorilla grip, dude. She got that fucking she got the wop, bro. The oyster apparently. is his tiny attic. During the day, he would emerge from his lair to be with Dolly. When his um, skills weren't needed, Otto kept busy doing the housework. Fred would never know it, but it wasn't Dolly who ironed his clothes, made his bed, polished his shoes, and cooked his dinner. Nice! And on top of all that, right, the occasional pussy that you're getting, you're doing all of the chores for her actual man, dude. Bro, this dude is so dead, dude. <laughs> it was the man who'd been living in his house for years without him knowing. Nah, if bro. if that doesn't creep you out, nothing will. Nah, bro. As utterly bro. bizarre as this arrangement was, it went on like this for a staggering nine years. And remember, Fred and Dolly moved during that time. Thanks to some very careful planning on Dolly's part, Otto managed to move with them. After Fred's I murder, do, I Otto literally said that. I said she smuggled his ass all the way over to LA, bro. I just to live dude. in Dolly's attic, including yet another house move. But his simple existence was about to come to an abrupt end. You see, Dolly wasn't doing such a great job of playing the grieving widow. Not least because she'd started sleeping with the lawyer who'd handled her dead husband's estate. A man named nice. Herman Shapiro. And bro, it, so this really she really ain't shit, bro. She, she really, she really ain't shit, bro. Seems Dolly was pretty fond of old Herman, because after they'd been seeing each other for a few months, she decided to give him a gift. A rather nice diamond encrusted watch. Yeah, not her finest moment. Oh it my wasn't long god, the you bitch! Roll out the guillotine. Who's investigating Fred's murder found out about Dolly's little gift. Dude, rest in peace, Fred, bro. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. R Fred, I will slide for you. I will, I, will fucking, I will fucking slide for you, Fred. You did not deserve this. You did not. Do you built the family wealth. Okay, you you started the company, you created the wealth, you you pay all the fucking bills, bro. Meanwhile, your wife cheats on you, and then the dude she's cheating with kills you, then the lawyer who handles your stuff ends up fucking your wife, and then the wife is giving your valuables to the new dude she's fucking, bro. Dude, Fred doesn't deserve this. Fred doesn't deserve any of this, bro. And they immediately connected it to Fred's supposedly stolen watch. If they'd been suspicious before, now they were certain Dolly had been involved. Oh, and yeah, you're fucking stupid for doing that. How you gonna tell them that they stole the watch and then you gonna give somebody the fucking watch? Like, I don't know how that makes sense, but okay. Her husband's murder. She was duly arrested and knowing she might be facing a long spell in jail, her thoughts naturally turned to the big man upstairs. Otto. Dolly worried her secret lover was going to starve. With nobody else to turn up, she asked her new boyfriend, Herman, to take a few supplies up to her attic, claiming she'd been letting her homeless brother stay there for a while. It was a flimsy lie, and when Herman opened the trap door to Otto's lair, it was exposed immediately. Remember, by this time, Otto Dude. hadn't spoken to another other than Dolly for 10 years. 
The idea that an actual human being could come to visit him sent Otto into overdrive. He thanked Herman for the food, then promptly spilled the beans about his affair with Dolly, Fred's murder, and his role in the house, Builds a sim. which he described as part sex slave, part secret housekeeper. Luckily for Otto, not to mention- Part sex slave, part secret housekeeper, and you voluntarily decided to live that life, dude. To Dolly, Herman didn't go to the police. He'd fallen for Dolly pretty hard, and he had no intention of seeing her end up in jail. Dolly would indeed escape a prison sentence. The judge threw out the trial. Dude, Dolly on. got lucky, bro, because she fucking a lawyer now. You know what I'm saying? And he gonna, he gonna make sure her ass is not in jail, dude. Of evidence. She, she is, got she home, got lucky. Herman Shapiro made her an ultimatum. Either the man in the attic had to go, or he would. And so, after nearly a decade living in secret in Dolly's loft, in 1923... Nice! And he did all of that for 10 years just for her to kick his ass out for the lawyer. Listen, bro. Listen. He, listen, I, I, wanna, I really want to feel bad for Otto. I really do. I really do, bro. I hate to see a fellow brother fall this hard, bro. But he did this to himself, dude. This trifling hoe. Fuck this bitch, bro. Dicks before chicks. After nearly a decade, dicks before in this. This. In this is why women in don't deserve rights. Nineteen twenty-three. That was a joke. Otto Sanhuber was forced back out into the world. Over the following years, the investigation into Fred's murder went cold. But it was only a matter of time before Dolly slipped up again. And in 1930, she did exactly Bro, that. This guy, I'm not gonna lie, this guy is making this a lot more pleasurable of an experience, bro. His voice is just so happy, bro. I just I feel I feel comfortable just listening to this dude tell me. I'd want him to read me the entirety of Moby Dick, bro. Like I feel like he would go absolutely crazy reading the entirety of of the Lord of the Rings series, bro. Absolutely sliding on that beat. Only a matter of time before Dolly slipped up again. And in 1930, she did exactly that. When she unceremoniously dumped Herman Shapiro, the one man alive aside from Otto Sanhuber, who knew all her most dangerous secrets. <sighs> Annoyed at being cast aside, Herman Shapiro marched straight he into snitched. the nearest Fuck. police station. He fucking and snitched. The first officer he could find. He went federal, bro. I don't even blame him, dude. I don't even fucking blame him, dude. Everything he knew about his ex Do it. Fuck her. The man she'd kept Fuck hidden it. in the loft for a decade, and the crime they'd committed together. Otto and Dolly were duly arrested, and both were put on trial for Fred's murder. Otto, who since leaving Dolly had managed to get Otto got himself a new bitch, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> married to a woman who actually let him live in her house, confessed to having killed Fred. That's but crazy. His way of the jury, Otto had only been trying to protect Dolly from her violent husband. Otto was convicted, but of manslaughter, not murder. Me and since the statute of limitations had run out on that charge, He doesn't serve jail time! Fucking auto, bro! Let's fucking go, bro! That is a... That is a fucking character development we love to fucking see, bro! Otto spent 10 years of his life at the mercy of some pussy down absolutely tremendous gets kicked to the fucking curb but then it all gets better he finds himself his uh, a batter bitch that lets him actually live in the house and he doesn't even get to go to jail for the cry dude let's fucking go Otto he walked away from Fuck the trial yeah a bro man. somehow Dolly also walked away without punishment for her part in Now I'm pissed off, dude. Bro, the perfect ending would have been Otto getting married and having six kids, getting rich and retiring in Bali, and then this bitch dies of kidney failure after serving 13 years in federal prison, bro. That's the happy ending. You just fucking ruined it for me. But of manslaughter, not murder. And since the statute of limitations had run out on that charge, he walked away from the trial a free man. 
Somehow, Dolly also walked away without punishment for her part in Fred's murder. Her trial ended with the jury unable to reach a decision as to her guilt. As you can probably imagine, the story of the man who lived in his lover's attic for almost a decade was a media sensation. Otto was dubbed the Batman of LA and the Ghost in the Garret. But his story has been largely forgotten in the years since, though it did inspire a truly terrible made-for-TV film starring a young Neil Patrick Harris. After the trials, Otto Sanhuber faded into obscurity, and Dolly Oysterreich finally settled down, living with her second husband until she died in the early 1960s. So far as we know- Bet that guy was, was rich too, huh? This is such an unusual tale, it's hard to know what to make of it. But if there's one thing I'd like you to take away from this video, it's this. Dicks before chicks, that's what you gotta take away. The next time you hear a strange scuffling noise coming from your attic, there's a good chance you don't have an annoying mouse infestation after all. It's probably just a person who lives in your house without you knowing about it. You're welcome. And thanks for now watching. fucking paranoid. Now fucking paranoid, dude. Ching. Good news, you can. Bro, if there's a dude up there, if, if there's somebody in my fucking, please say something now. Please say something. Please just say what's up. If you live in my, I will gladly allow you to. Okay, you ain't bothering me before. You ain't bothering me yet. Okay, you ain't. You you, you haven't been bothering me. Okay, if you want to live up there? Do it, bro. But I would like to be aware of your presence. If there is a, a a crackhead, a weird demon up there lurking, okay, taking refuge in my attic, please let me know so I don't get caught off guard and something bad happens at that time, dude. Dear fucking God, bro, this story was insane. Story was fucking insane. This, this, you know what I'm saying? Dicks before chicks. Can't stress that enough, bro. If after watching this, you still dealing with the trifling hoes, bro, then that's on you, bro. I love the story with Otto. Okay, I'm kind of mad she didn't get fucking locked up, dude. But this was fucking wild.